Hello, beautiful human, Nick Sterniolo. Going to be in the studio any second now, but I want to talk to you about sleep. Come on, man. Try out my mattress. I've been sleeping on the Vibersonic by Beyond Sleep for a year and a half now, and I'm obsessed with this thing. The memory foam understands my body. When I get hot, it gets cold. Plus, the adjustable base aligns to my spine. You can go into zero gravity. And I can tell you, hmm. this mattress has six subwoofers built into it, so it connects to your sound system. You're going to watch TV differently. You're going to watch movies differently. You're going to listen to podcasts differently. Everything will be different, but better with the Vibersonic by Beyond Sleep. I'm telling you, if you want a better night's sleep and if you want to do more with your mattress, try out my mattress. It's the Vibersonic. There's a code on the screen or a link below. Hello, beautiful human. I am hey. Zach. That is Dan. Yo. And we welcome to the studio for the first time ever. Two out of three triplets. Yeah. This is the second out of the three of you. Yep. Nick Sterniolo is here. Yay. I'm excited to be here. Thank you, everyone. And you were whipping out your your beautiful Space Camp wellness boxes. Oh, yes. I have them for both of you guys. Okay. So you say this brand is inclusive and sustainable. What do those two things mean? And Sam, can you just hand that can to you me? Can hand those over yeah, here? Yeah. For sure. So for me, like the, the inclusive part is like obviously everybody... Like, lip balm is, like, a universal thing that everybody uses, but I feel like most brands are targeted, like, in a very feminine direction. So the reason of saying it's inclusive and just saying that it's unisex is, like, it's kind of an obvious thing. And I know people were like, okay, yeah, it's unisex, but, like, obviously, you know? Yeah. But it's just, like, hammering that in so that everybody feels comfortable. Because some people, like, to lip balm is, like, a feminine thing. I yeah. like this. This is pretty. Yeah, I love it. I love the packaging as well. So who do you, like, are you doing this on your own? Who do you partner with to do this? How does yeah, this so even come to Yeah, so it took me, like, months to, like, really work on it and figure it out. But I was basically getting into the rhythm of, like, I knew I wanted to do a lip balm. And then from there, it was about, like, sourcing, like, the right team and the right manufacturer because I'm an avid lip balm user. So I knew that I wanted to make sure that the product was really, really good. So that was the first step is I needed to find a place that had the product really, really good and then a team behind it that also was like super willing to hop on. So it took me like eight months, but Wow. Yeah. I think my first idea of wanting to start a lip balm was like nine months ago. And how many different places do you go and pitch this idea to? So it was mostly me and my manager worked together and I told her that I wanted to do a lip balm and then we she mostly outsourced like here are the people. And I had tried like three other products before realizing that that was my favorite because obviously it's like my main goal is like I need to find a product I love that I can stand behind because that's my most confident thing is I am very confident and I love the product so it's so easy for me to like be like hey you guys should buy it and you guys will love it because I really do love it okay so what is it about this chapstick that is different than other chapstick and what makes a good chapstick okay so it's bigger than other ones so it's 60% okay. bigger than the average tube. It's hard to tell when you're holding it, but like when you compare it to another one. Way bigger. Definitely way bigger. Compared to that one I just threw at you. Yeah. That one's in the trash now. Yeah, we're throwing that one out. See yeah. the difference? Pretty big. And then I forgot the second half of your question. Um, what makes a good chapstick? For me, it's just making sure you feel moisturized. Like I love putting lip balm on before I fall asleep. Mm. That's like my thing because I always like if I can sleep in it comfortably. I know that it's good and it's moisturizing, right? Because that was kind of another reason. It's like a funny way to be like, oh, I want to start a lip balm. But forever ago, I, um, my freshman year of high school, I fell asleep with like super chapped lips in the winter on the East Coast. Mm. And I woke up and my lip was like split open down the middle because I, I fell asleep with such insanely chapped lips. that when I woke up, they were like split open. And then I ended up getting a staph infection in the cut in my mouth Jesus. had to go to the hospital and then had an allergic reaction to the meds I was on <laughs> when anaphylactic shock in school and was stretchered out of Spanish class oh. and from that day on I was like I'm never not using lip balm ever again wow yeah so I was like I need this needs to be an avid part of my like schedule so okay yeah. you know that it begins with lip balm but where do you see something like space camp ending in terms of a brand so, like, it's just starting for me, so I'm very on the fence. So I'm, like, knowing that there's as I evolve, it's going to evolve. Okay. Right now, it's, like, the bonus start for me, and then I'm going to obviously introduce way more flavors as we move along the path, and then obviously new products eventually down the line. But everything's a working machine. Like, as I figure out what I like and start to use, 
that's what the brand will develop into. Very cool. Yeah. I love the packaging. Yeah, I awesome. love it. I'm a really, really big fan of my own thing, which he, is exactly, I have to be. You better be. Yeah, I love it. How important was it to build your own thing that was just you by yourself and not attached to your brothers? Yeah, so like me, Matt, and Chris always have conversations about individuality and like what we're going to do alone. And I, I love that I'm doing it alone, but me, Matt, and Chris always kind of like psych ourselves out to being like, oh, we're going to do an individual project, but then... Like, it is all my ideas, and it is my movement, it is mine, but me, Matt, and Chris are constantly bouncing shit off each other. Like, every idea I have, I'll tell them, and then they'll give me my feed, they'll give me feedback. So, it is my personal project, and it's important to me for, like, um, from an outside perspective, for people to see me venturing off and, like, doing something kind of on my own, but... Matt and Chris are right there with me while I'm doing it. So that's like the best part. It's like I am doing it alone to like perspective wise, but not really, honestly. Yeah, they're, they're right there. always there. Yeah. You need their honesty. And you, yeah. You're honest with family in ways that you're not honest with other people. For sure. Me and Matt and Chris are like literally, we solve 90% of problems by arguing with each other. <laughs> like, we're like, let's just fight for like an hour and then we'll, we'll, our end goal is right there at the end of the fight. Yeah, but the, yeah. literally every time. Every time? <laughs> Yeah. How do you educate somebody who's not part of your family on how your process works? See, that I think is my, that's my biggest struggle where like, I also am like, I think I'm just a very like blunt human being because of the fact that like as a, especially it like goes into like, it's so difficult to talk to people differently than the way I talk to Matt and Chris, but people when they get be to become my friend, they eventually start to realize that I am just like going to say it how it is like how I see so it's like when when I'm first becoming friends with someone I kind of like tone that back and it's kind of sometimes hard for me to tone that back but once I get to know someone really really well I talk to them like I talk to Matt and Chris which sometimes is a scary thing but then they start to realize that they can do it to me as well and it's like it is more problem solving that way well, that's also how you build like friends that turn into family right yeah like I've there's like there's a good collection of people in my life that I could I feel very comfortable equally like starting an argument with like jokingly kind of to like get to like the issue or problem. But I've also never in my life been in a long lasting friendship that has had more than like three arguments. Like I never argue with friends. The second you I feel like you're arguing with a friend like super consistently, it's just not worth it to like attempt to continue to mend a friendship. Like a friendship has to be there. For you to like find joy in being friends with that person and not like if you're constantly problem solving, there's so many other people in the world that are like on the same path as you that it makes more sense to be friends with. Has living the life that you live today made it harder or easier to find genuine friends? I'd say it's hard. It's, I'd, I think the answer is right in the middle, honestly, because it's like it's not necessarily harder or easier to find genuine friends because it's like. It's just more of like put every single relationship I have into a new perspective, like seeing it through a new lens. Like I don't think the actual difficulty has increased or decreased, but my vision of how it's going to end or how it's going to go is much clearer. I understand that. Right? I don't know. But wait, wait, okay, so what adds to the clarity? And I think that it's just weird and I love like – the way that I grew up so much because it's like working at a grocery store and being a gay kid have both set me up for like, I feel like just really understanding like what is going on in my life. And like the such a jump from like being someone that lives in a smaller city and working at a grocery store to like what my life is like now is such a vast difference that I see the perspective of like someone that's like living my, what my life used to be. And I think that that change happening to me it was seeing, like, who can adapt to this. Like, I have a friend, Nathan, that lives in Boston that was my friend that I played hockey with when I was in high school or in middle school that is still my closest friend because he adapted really well to the change of my Matt and Chris's life, and he understands that. So I think it's all about kind of, like, there's people that I've met at this point in my life that resonate with this point in my life, but then there's people that I knew at that point in my life. That couldn't make the transition. That, yeah, either couldn't make the transition or just, like, did make the transition are still here. And those people are the closest, I'm assuming, yeah, to you. for sure. It's interesting that, like, you, I've never heard somebody word it that way because you've gone through a drastic lifestyle change mm -hmm. in a very small amount of time. How would you describe what you do for a living? I don't know. 
I never can answer that question. If someone's like, what are you? I really juggle with like influencer, content creator, comedian. Cause like I'd say our videos, like we do create content, but our content is funny. So it's like, I sometimes will say like, especially with me, Matt and Chris touring and actually doing something on a stage. That to me is when I feel more like a comedian than like an influencer. Cause I genuinely am like on a stage, like essentially telling jokes. Like I'd say our like, our tours and like our stage presence is more of like a comedy show than it is influencer based. But I always struggle with that, especially like explaining it to my parents. Like I'm like, I don't know at all. I really don't. Your I parents, just know that it's working. I, I from your brother. Your parents sound like very special people. They're amazing. Yeah. Who still are, are proud of you? Yeah. Is it wild? Have you been home since all of this? Oh, me and Chris try and find our time to go home as much as we possibly can. Like. We do a lot here, but we go home, I'd say, like, every two months for, like, at least a week or two weeks, which, is like, it becomes a lot traveling so much, but it's so worth it to me to go home because every single time I come back to L.A., I have a completely shifted thought process every single time. Like, when I'm here and then I go to Boston, I'll come back two weeks later, and I feel so grounded or just different. And it's never the same experience of like coming back here and feeling grounded. It's genuinely like a full thought process switch every single time. And I don't know what it is, but I also find that with just traveling in general. Like when we're touring, depending what state I'm in, my thought process is just completely different because you're seeing so much more and you're seeing so many different like perspectives on life from so many different people. Do you prepare for the shows that you guys do now? Like, you talk about it being almost like a, a comedy set. Do you prepare for that set, or is it all improv So our first tour, we didn't know what we were going to do on stage until we got to the Roxy in L.A. in the green room. <laughs> Had no idea what we were going to do. By the way, I remember driving <laughs> down Sunset and seeing you guys on the Insane. billboard and then seeing the giant line out front. Insane. And that's the thing is me and Chris hadn't, like, and that's why even, like, doing something like this is so weird for me is, like, me Matt and Chris are, like, pretty big creators but it's like we I just have never had that perspective of like doing something that like famous people will go do like a show or being interviewed like I don't like we are like pretty big on that front of like people will recognize you or it's like those things that like come with like fame but we it's like a totally different perspective because it's like I feel like we haven't like leaned into that part of like what our job comes with. So touring was kind of the first perspective where I was like, oh my God, there are so many people here and I don't know what I'm doing. Like I really don't. But we got on stage. We had a question box. We're, like, we're going to do a and a We found a question box, I think a week before the tour started. <laughs> our fans submitted a bunch of questions. We went through them in the green room and picked like 20 that were our favorite. That whole tour, we went on stage and answered questions and then I realized we are putting on a comedy show to, like, the fans of, like, a Harry Styles or a Justin Bieber where they want to, like, scream and yell. But it works for that because the person's, like, singing a song into a mic. But, like, when you're a comedian, so to speak, like, comedy shows are usually have, like, a quiet yeah, audience. You have the, a chance to tell a story. Yeah, but it's, like, we're trying to do that, but with, like, an audience that's, like, for a performance. So that's when the thought process from mostly Chris came in of like we all knew that we needed to do something that was not just answering questions on stage the second time and then Chris came up with like us competing against each other as like a constant yeah. in our fan base and then that's why our second tour was mostly us like fighting not fighting but competing for like because then they can yell because there's like an experience that's yeah. worth yelling at and you tracked it across the whole tour it was fun yeah so that one was that one was I feel like better in the terms of like what we were doing on stage. How would you describe who and what you guys are to culture? Because if it's not famous, what is it? I have no idea. <laughs> I really don't. But that's like that's what current media is, right? Is like everybody can open your phone and like so and so who lives in Kansas can go to like the f local diner and like make a TikTok that like blows up, and then it's like, what is that person that? then call themselves you know what I mean because their day-to-day -day life is not changing but that video like blew up and then that's what I feel like my Matt and Chris's life was like because before posting content for so many people to see we were making like content that I was like my friends from school were watching if we went on vacation or I was like taking photos just to like 
do it. So it's like we did content for so long before it became a thing in the public eye. And then our life didn't really switch after people cared about it. So when did it switch? Like, I think for me, it was just like more of like a monetary thing. Like realizing that it's not like a fun thing I'm doing during school. It's like I'm out of school and now this is my job as well as something I enjoy doing. So realizing that it's kind of like our main focus is the biggest switch for me. So what parts of the job are, are different today than when you were just making content for fun and for your friends? I'd and say what it's the same. Like it is mostly the same. Like me, Matt, and Chris never plan what we're gonna say when we get into the car and talk to each other. We're also just like, I hate planning my content on like like obviously scheduling out stuff. Like we'll have to film like oh, five podcasts if we want to go home to Boston because we need to, like, cover ourselves. So we're on, like, a more of, like, a schedule basis. But I really, we don't really plan too much into, like, what we're going to film. We're kind of right now getting to a point where we're, like, transitioning a little bit into, like, scheduling out and planning, like, super different video ideas. But for the most part, it hasn't really changed yet. You recently said that you feel like you guys have been posting quantity over, instead of over quality. Absolutely. When did you get to that point and did you just feel like you had the pressure to just keep up with the schedule so you're just putting out whatever you can to, to yeah. keep up with it? I think me, Matt, and Chris having a posting schedule was our biggest blessing and curse at the same time because I don't think we would have gotten as far as we did in our career without the schedule. But then at a certain point, it kind of became like a burden of like finding ourselves on Tuesday night needing to post Wednesday. Like... I'd say car videos are always easy. That's me, Matt, and Chris, how we usually are and talking to each other. But trying to, like, whip something up on a Tuesday for Wednesday, that was when we kind of realized it's like we are filming and we don't want to be. I'd say there's only maybe nine to ten videos on the Internet that I'm kind of like I can look at and remember, like, yeah, that was, like, definitely, like, a post of, like, sticking to our schedule. But... That's why we're kind of getting to a point where it's like it's not worth putting out content and feeling like that. I feel so gross doing that, like putting out a video, being like on a schedule. But then people are like, "We're me, Matt and Chris and our fans love that schedule. It works well for all of us. They like it. They've implemented it into their daily lives. Like I know people who are like, we'll post TikToks like I don't make plans on Fridays or I tell my parents I can't go to dinner because I'm like, I have a Sterniola triplet video to watch. So the schedule works really well for me, Matt and Chris, and the fans, but I'd say it got to a point where it was, like, just feeling the way of, like, this is not a good video, but we're posting it anyway. But we haven't felt like that in forever, and that's why hopefully implementing, like, a possible new schedule will be our best-case scenario. What does a quality video mean and look like to you? Quality video, like, me, Matt, and Chris have gone out several times and been recording and then like 40 minutes in been like yeah we're done we're we're not putting whatever the experience we just had right now onto the internet ever so i'd say a quality video is more of like we're forgetting to film we're forgetting that we're filming like me and and chris will get in the car and be joking around with each other and then the camera will make the noise that it cuts and we'll all like look and be like what was that and it'll be like oh my god like we're filming a video right now like sometimes i genuinely forget that there's a camera on us in the car or like what we're doing. But quantity is definitely that feeling of like, oh God, we have to like post. But quality content has been like more planned out. And me, Matt, and Chris have good, like a good enough like comedic relationship that like I genuinely believe if someone put us in like a white room and was like, you have to make a video by next week, like we'd have a very solid video to put out. Like it's it's an easy task to put me, Matt, and Chris anywhere and be like, can you make a video doing this? Be like, absolutely. It's like the easiest thing for us three. A part of it being easy, does a part of you feel like any of it can go away? Because it is easy, right? Mm. You can do it. Anybody can do it. By the way, by all, if we were to go based on everything here, Mm -hmm. There could be another set of triplets working Mm -hmm. at a grocery store somewhere ready to go. By the way, I can also make the case that we've seen historically through, and I've been doing this show for 17 years. I remember, you you probably don't even know the Janoskians. Do not. Exactly. When I say pandemonium, they needed fucking security. People were throwing themselves on their Suburbans. Mm -hmm. They were breaking into their hotel rooms. They went from being fucking massive and not being able to navigate the globe without legitimate, I'm not kidding, like fucking security. Mm Mm-hmm. To being, I, I haven't heard from them in 10 years. Mm. It is wild. Because yeah. what exists today may not exist tomorrow. 
Absolutely. But you've obviously crafted something so special and deep. But is there ever the fear of like, what if? Every single day. I'm like waking up be like, but that's a chance I'm willing to take to do something that I like. Fuck yeah. Because I yeah. think I would rather be Fuck broke yeah. and forgotten about at 50 and like have to go back to being like, like I'd actually, I think rather, I would much rather be doing what I'm doing and take that chance as opposed to like going to school and then going to film like some sort of like, like, I, I also loved my life before we were making videos, and that was our only job. Like, I liked the friendships I had. I liked working at the grocery store. It was a fun experience for me. I wouldn't mind doing that again if I had to, say, in 40 years from now. I'd rather live this next 40 years filming content that I love, posting with Matt and Chris, 30 years, whatever that time frame may be, for as long as this lasts, and then go back to that life, as opposed to not trying this and then being, like, a business person this that that I go to my good job and get money that way you know what I mean like I'd rather work at the grocery store happy like that again than I would trying to get like a much better position that I could keep forever like I'd rather instability and happiness than stability in my job hell yeah yeah well because like that's also how greatness is like made yeah I just, it's just like I don't find a point in living the one life that we all get doing something comfortably. And that is what, like, that scenario would be. And obviously, it's like not people, not everybody's fortunate enough to, like, have a video blow up and live the scenario that me, Matt, and Chris do. That's a very rare scenario, and we're very fortunate for that. But I always just think of, like, that. that's not what, that's, th this conversation isn't most people's reality. Of, like, what if it goes away? Because most people can't even get to that point. True. Which is why that's why I'm just like very comfortable. It's like so many people would do anything to be in the position I'm in that if I'm not capitalizing on, on it, I'm I'm like ruining something for them. Because I always think of me three years ago would do anything to be in this position. So it's like, why would you not capitalize on finally being there? And trying to create something that is everlasting, right? Yeah. Or, or uh, consistent for however long the people choose to consume your stuff and allow mm -hmm. it to be. Yeah. Why do you think people watch you? I don't know. Once again, like all of these, like there's, I think it was honestly like really like a stars aligning situation. Cause me, Matt and Chris really like, cause I see like our engagement and people who care about us compared to like other people. And I'm like, why is or like, ours really good? Or like, full, full blown celebrities. You can compare your engagement to somebody who's been like a celebrity, a very famous celebrity for a long time and you win. And that's why I'm like, why? Mm-hmm. Why at all? Like, I remember Chris made a joke. Me and him were live on Instagram, and Matt was taking a nap. And he was like, everyone go comment Fortnite, 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 Fortnite under Matt's new recent. And then he'll wake up from his nap and be like, why is everyone commenting Fortnite under my post? And an hour later, we checked, and Matt woke up, and he had, like, 13,000 comments on his post. And I'm like, the fact that you just summoned a, – I'd say there's probably a 1,000 comments already. I'm like – or, like, maybe, like, 2,000. I'm like, the fact that you just summoned about 11,000 people – to commit an action you jokingly made on live is insane to me. I have no idea what the draw is to me, Matt, and Chris, but I think it starts with being triplets because triplets is like an anomaly. It's like, what is this? Like that it's like insane already. So then it's like on top of being triplets, we've just like we just started posting everything we were doing. And I do feel like I am funny. I know that I'm funny, luckily. <laughs> and I think then like not only were we triplets, but like we have personalities that I feel like are worth watching to some people, I guess. Like, if I wasn't me, I'd be a fan of myself, I think. Because <laughs> I think of, like, the Dolan twins. Like, I loved their videos. There was, like, a lot of YouTubers that, and, like, just even people who I was super invested in their lives before. And I can picture myself being a fan of, like, someone like me, like, three years ago. Because I was in every single one of our fans' shoes now, literally three years ago. Being a fan of everybody around you. Mm -hmm. Do you learn anything from the Dolan twins? Is there a cautionary tale there? See, it, what's, I don't know, like, the Dolan Twins, I just, like, I loved watching their videos, but I've always been, like, a distant fan, like, for everything that I was a fan of. Like, I was not, like, a fan account holder, I was not, like, an avid poster vocalizing my opinion on things in the fan base. So that's the thing I think I was most unprepared for getting into, like, this world, is, like, not everyone just watches your video, enjoys it, and leaves a comment, like, love this video. Like, there's people that dedicate their lives to like, what is going on, you know what I mean? 
theorizing and commenting and being dedicated. And that's what I think I expect at least. Even so many fan pages. I'd say me, Matt, and Chris can thank our entire career to TikTok fan pages. Absolutely. Wow. Without question. Because that's what just I think the initial pull was. It's like everybody was forced to see our content on TikTok. And then all those people channeled over to YouTube. Like I would confidently tell somebody I'm a YouTuber and not a TikToker because most of our engagement is on YouTube. And that's what we primarily post on. But TikTok sent all those people there. It's interesting how it all works, right? Yeah, because there's a lot of people that I see that are, like, really big TikTokers that are constantly sending people over to their YouTube channel that, like, don't have as much YouTube push as me, Matt, and Chris do, but, like, more TikTok followers. So I don't know why, because it is hard to, like, get your followers to go from one place to another, right? It's hard to be like, oh, everyone here on TikTok, go follow my YouTube and watch not a 60-second video of me talking, but, like, a 30-minute video of me talking. And, like, we have... We were able to get those people that watched like a minute of us to watching 30 minutes of us talking. And I'm like, I don't know how we were able to make that transition because that's difficult. That's the, probably the most difficult part about being a creator is getting people to like something you do for a long amount of time, keeping them engaged. And we were like weirdly able to do that. But I'll tell you this. I think people want genuine companionship and they want to feel like they're in the room or in the car with somebody or in the kitchen with somebody. And it's... In my opinion, one of the many, like, one of the couple reasons why our show has been around for so long mm-hmm. is that people just want to be a part of it, right? Like, even this conversation, there's, I hope you feel like you're a part of the fucking conversation because mm-hmm. you Absolutely. are. Like, there's a seat for you right on the couch. And yeah. I think people just want to feel a part of it. Yeah. And you do a good no job at doing that. making content if no one's going to consume it in my eyes. It's like, that's the point. Like, even if at some point in my life that was just my parents, I was okay with that because it was my parents. You know what I mean? But there has to be one viewer to your content. Otherwise, like, I know that me, Matt, and Chris are in our position because people care about it. Well, they care about it, but they also, again, I think they feel like they're friends. Yeah. And that's the thing is, like, it really is because it's, like, what they're posting will— And another thing I think of me, Matt, and Chris being successful early on was every single one of our video ideas, I'd say, like— or not every single one because sometimes— Obviously, as creators, we'll have our own idea, but I'd say 80% of our videos are fan-submitted ideas of what to talk about or film. And that's what I think at the start was super helpful is, like, we'd be like, hey, guys, give us an idea for a video. And people sometimes were like, oh, that's lazy that you're asking your fans for it. But it's like, if the consumer is telling you what they want, why would you not do that? But breaking news, every time I leave a comment telling you what to do, I'm going to tune in next time to see if you did it. Correct. And that's why it's like, people were like, no one says this now. But, like, when we were early on, I remember we would, like, consistently post. Like, right now we'll post, we'll get, we'll post one of those stories and people will be like, you guys don't even use our ideas. It's like, no. When we post a story, we get, like, thousands and thousands of thousands and thousands of responses. And we'll get a piece of paper and a notebook or a whiteboard and write, like, 50 of them down. So we may not be posting that story of, like, hey, submit us car video ideas or Wednesday video ideas. And when we do, people are like, you don't even use these because you rarely post it. But it's like, we have pages and pages and whiteboards and whiteboards filled with their ideas from those stories. It was it was your fan's idea for us to have Chris in originally. Like, we just yeah. woke up and we were bombarded with comments. Absolutely. And ever since Chris was here, it's like, Matt and Nick, Matt and Nick. And yeah. we're like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, because that's my biggest, like, kind of fears. Like, our fans are, ve- like, dedicated to the point where they will... They will drive in the <laughs> yeah. fact. Like, that's why I try no, not to. Love s- it. That's why I try not to speak on things super, super publicly. Just like about like a celebrity I like, right? Because if I was like, oh, I love Billie Eilish so much, she's my favorite singer, I could get her comments. Like I could get ten thousand people in her <laughs> comments. Like I could get her attention. I don't need. I don't want to do that because I don't want to feel like we're bombarding people by mm-hmm. like sending our fans at them. But like our fans are super dedicated. That's why it's like. When we were first early on, I used to, like, reply to, like, a hate comment or, like, a silly comment. And, like, like part of my humor is, like, talking shit. Like, I'll talk shit with Matt and Chris. Like, not talk shit, but, like, make fun of or yell at them. And my humor is usually, like, me yelling at them. So I jokingly do the same type of banter with, like, comments in my TikTok chat. But I'm, like, I won't do that now that we've engaged such an engaging audience. Because I don't want to send, like, 10,000 cyber bullies to this person. Because <laughs> I'm fucking around. But these people are dead serious. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they are actually, like, they are motivated to with, go. With great power comes great responsibility, yeah. right? So I don't make those TikToks anymore. I'm, like, I don't want to send 10,000 cyber bullies. That's not what my goal was. Mm-hmm. So I was, like, I'm just not going to do that. The whole thing is so interesting to me because you guys are just being yourself and you've been 
really honest and mm-hmm. open and it's been you live your truth right yeah. that's why i feel like it is that is mostly our success is like we're not putting on like a facade or a character and that's why i think our content is so easy to film as well on top of easy to watch is like this is genuinely what i would say if you were here right now you know what i mean it's like this is how i would act if you were like the viewers were all here with me and i think tor made that evident as well is like this is who we are like through and through, like, if you meet us, if you see us, like, we're gonna, like, like, there'll be fans that come through the meet and greet, and, like, they'll say, like, a joke that, like, I will die laughing at, or, like, I'll say a joke, and they'll hear me, and those interactions always remind me of, like, if that was caught on camera, that would be a viral moment in one of our videos, but it's just, like, that just shows, like, we, me and Chris have so many scenarios in our day-to-day life that, like, if on camera, that'd be a viral moment, but that's because our viral moments are those, like, captured in our life. It's the exact same experience. Because I've seen people that, like, fully put on a front. Like, a camera comes out and it's, like... Crazy, right? Yeah, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, even going out, like, like a character... Oh, dude. Like, there's so many character-esque people out there that are just, like, living fake lives. Isn't it scary? Terrifying. And you see it all in this city. It's like a horror movie. Oh, my God, yeah. It's like seeing the switch between people. And it's not like I'm, like... I'm not even thinking of someone in specific, and I hate like being like, "Oh, L.A. this, L.A. Oh, that." It's not. It's I'm thinking like, like three people right off the top of my head. No, I am as well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I lied. I fully lied. I am fully as well. Yeah, but it's like there. It's like I've just seen like it's like almost like in a like in a horror movie when like someone's like under a trance, like you see them like snap out and then snap back. It's like very terrifying. It's, and I don't understand how people maintain it. And and I've said this so many times before, and I'll say it until I'm blue in the face or until I, you know, don't do this any longer, which will be when I'm dead. But like, the easiest part about what I do every day and what I've done for the last 17 years is just mm-hmm. literally live my God's honest truth. Absolutely. No matter how bad or how great it yeah. is, it doesn't matter or how yeah. in between it is. I have no fucking time for an act. Mm-hmm. And one of the greatest compliments I'll ever receive is the the person I hear or watch is the same person that I get to know mm-hmm. or experience right now. And like I've, I've acquired so many beautifully best friends uh-huh. that have come on our show that like the only reason we become friends is because I get to just be myself and the person mm-hmm. that you get here is not different than the person you get in a fucking kitchen somewhere. Yeah, that's ex- that's just exactly what it is. Because it's like I just don't understand how this person can maintain this character and feel mm-hmm. comfortable doing that. Because it's like, I would break so easily. But they usually do break. Yeah. Oh, I mean, t- I mean here's the deal. When Especially when, like, character, like, fake characters, bullshit mm. facades are pressure tested. Mm. Nine times out of ten, they will snap. Absolutely. And that's why, like, I know that me, Matt, and Chris are 100% authentically ourselves. There are some things that I limit because the internet... Because I always say, like, our fans do everything out of, like, 100% love, right? Like, they don't mean to, like, if things go in negative direction. But there's some things that I will limit keeping off of the internet or just, like, not talking about, like, if I'm sad or upset. Not because I want to be inauthentic that that's real human emotion. Is I don't want all these people to worry about me or be yeah. thinking about those things. You know what I mean? So it's, like, we are 100% authentically ourselves. Yeah, there's things that I'll be, like, we don't need millions of people's opinion on. In terms of my feelings, and that's okay. Like, I'm not going to post that, but the, I don't. I don't think reserving some privacy from the internet is a term of being fake, and that's what I just want to make sure of my point in like what I had previously said is like I'm not saying that when I'm talking about people who are putting on a character, that's what they're doing. It's genuinely like character esque behavior, yeah. of like a performance of a character that's not who they are. A performance mm-hmm. that's different than reserving elements of your truth yeah. from the public discussion or public forum absolutely right like totally yeah. different mm-hmm. and dude there's so many people some of the biggest creators in the world yeah that have now failed and crashed and burned in some arenas mm. were propped up by like the most fake bullshit it's just like to me it's like it's just weirder it's weirder getting to know that person you know what i mean because when you're meeting like character type of people it's like you meet them and you're expecting what you saw online. It's totally different. And then it's like the fact that you like we are talking about this is weird because that would mean that we'd both have to like meet someone expecting something that we didn't get. Totally. But I'll, but I'll tell you this, like 100 percent. Right. Like you meet somebody that you 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 get to know through whatever forum mm-hmm. videos, music, what have you. Mm-hmm. And then when you meet them in person, they are so not what you have gotten to know mm. 
through every avenue that they've chosen to populate with co their content. Yeah. Happens all the time. But then there are people who are so themselves. I was about to say You're that. friends with Madison Beer, right? I was I'll about to say, I'm like very no, hopeful that people don't think I'm talking about her. No, but she's that bitch genuinely... is, she's the most genuine person. <laughs> I'll tell you this. That motherfucker, the same person that you get on the couch is the same person you get backstage at a concert. It's the same yeah. person you get backstage at a listening event. She's exactly. Same person you get at a party, her mm -hmm. house, don't matter. Yeah. I remember the first time me, Matt, and Chris had ever met her. She's like one of our, like, I feel like one of my closest friends right now is like, I remember being at her house and she was like just playing with her dog and something simple like that. I remember like driving home and I don't think I stopped talking about her playing with her dog for like 10 minutes. I, think. <laughs> I was like, it's just like, it reminded me so much of like friendships that I had when I was in like seventh and eighth grade and sixth grade. Cause it was like genuinely just so like meeting someone at school and like you just are immediately click with them and you are just like, because they're completely authentically yeah. themselves. Like, I remember just seeing her, and it almost, like, makes me emotional thinking about someone that way. Because it was, like, when I had met her, I was just, like, it was, like, unbelievable to me how good I felt about meeting a human being. It actually shocked me. I did not stop talking about it for, like, 20 minutes. She's up there. For sure. She's a good one. Brittany Broski's the same way. Mm -hmm. I had never met her, but I'm sure. Trisha Paytas is the same way. Mm -hmm. Love her. Yeah. Oh, um, Trisha there's, Paytas. There is a lot of people, and that's the thing, is, Tell like, talking you. about people who are character... That's rare. There's a lot of people that are genuinely through and through the exact same human being. By the way, some of the most successful people are, mm -hmm. right? Madison being one of them. That's a good friendship that you guys have built. Yeah. How'd you even meet for the first time? Um, I think she had seen just one of our videos and found us funny. And then she had DM'd me and said, you're funny. And I was like, thank you. And then we hadn't acted on that one DM interaction. And then a year had passed. And me, Matt, and Chris go to Boston frequently. And we were about to go to Boston. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to like take a stab at this again. And I DM'd her and I was like, I know that you are who you are. You probably have plans tonight. You're the busiest human being ever probably because I feel busy as me and she's her. And I'm like, I don't even want to think about what's on your calendar. But <laughs> her social calendar ain't that full. I was just like, <laughs> she's I, I was like, I can, I'll take this risk. I texted her and I was just like, hey, what are you doing? And she's like, T tomorrow because we're leaving to Boston in two days. Like if you have nothing tomorrow, like we can do something. So we met out that night, and we just got along super well, and that was really it. And then from that, we just got really, really close, and she's amazing. You were you were talking not too long ago about how you weren't comfortable swimming in front of people, but you have a good friend that has a pool. And oh, yeah. Was that Madison you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, I hate— I've— I hate being shirtless. Oh, me too. I hate it. Least favorite thing ever. I was a um, a beach and pool shirt guy my whole life. Me too. Never shirtless ever. You wear like the 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 really the spandex like rash the guards. The dry fit shirts. Yeah, terrible. I, I I hate that. And it's like I it's so funny. I have shirts for like every occasion. Like I sleep in shirts. Like I have like shirt textures are my thing. Like a shirt texture can take me to an environment. Like I got pool <laughs> shirts. I got sleep shirts that I need. There's like certain shirts that I can literally touch or look at and be like. I know exactly the situation I would be for this, but that's a side note. But just the sleep, like the pool shirts is like my, that was my entire life. I had never felt comfortable in front of a group of people like shirtless and like jumping in a pool. Even like Matt and Chris, like if we went on like family vacation, I just would hate being out. Cause what if someone else comes to this like public pool? Oh, I've never related to anything more in my and life. And especially being like someone in the public image, I'd hate someone taking my photo at like a beach shirtless. And uh, then it's just like that happened to me once. Yeah, it's like, oh my God, I'd not I'd I don't even want to tell you what I'd do to myself. I'd be so mad. Brother, I can count the amount of times I've been shirtless in a public forum. It's yeah. about three. There's okay? zero photos of me on the internet shirtless at all either. Uh, I'm like, refuse this. So, okay, well, let's break uh, let's break this whole thing down. Absolutely. Because again, I I haven't started being shirtless like around another person until fairly recently in life, and I am 30 years old. And I love that for you. I was <laughs> a fucking never nude up until like six months ago. Mm -hmm. No lie. Mm -hmm. Again, took my shirt off never in a pool, ever, only once at the beach, and I was in the beach, or in the water, and these kids swam up to me and my friend and asked if I was fucking Zach Sang, and I wanted to just drown. Yeah. Worst nightmare ever. Yeah. I know how many times I've taken off my shirt. It's been twice. Mm. Two fucking times. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Do you just not go into the pool? Because that's what I would do. I don't. No. I just watch them in the pool. I either never go into a pool or I went in with a shirt on. Like one of my friends in Boston has a backyard with a pool in it. That was like my man Chris's like childhood pool scenario was her house. 
and we we went we went constantly, and we would always go constantly. We're still friends with her to this day, and I think I've swam in that pool shirtless zero times. But we'd go, and I'd either swim shirtless or watch everybody swim. And actually, I know Chris told you all about our house fire, so I'm not gonna tell you again. But <laughs> when I when our house was on fire, Matt and Chris slept in because they were playing Fortnite yeah. that whole night. I was the first time I'd ever made plans independently of like I'm going to get up and leave the house, and I went to my friend's pool. And I found out our house was on fire like the first time I was shirtless in that pool. <laughs> really? I was shirtless in the pool and I remember my friend, my friend Taylor, my friend Taylor was sitting at the table. She's like, Nick, your dad's calling you. Your dad's calling you. He called you three times. I was like, okay. Pass me my phone. So she gave me my phone, my house on fire. I was like, yeah, clearly things will go wrong if I, I was like, I finally have, I've made progress. I'm swimming shirtless in this pool. I'm, my house is on fire. And everything you never doing this burns. again. Yeah. It's like all my, yeah, I have no option now, but to be shirtless, all my shirts are on fire. I don't own shirts anymore. It was terrible. But yeah, I, I was like, if this is what the cause and effect is, I'm like losing my mind. So, was that the last time you were shirtless? No. So Madison's house, I feel really comfortable swimming in her pool shirtless at this point. But let's make it clear. It's really, and this is for me, and maybe I'm speaking, you know, for you, and I shouldn't. It's not really the act of swimming. It's the people you're around and feeling for, comfortable. Absolutely. That's what it always is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the only reason I don't really swim um, shirtless with just Matt and Chris is because we don't have a pool. So it's like anytime I'm swimming with Matt and Chris, is like it's a public setting. You know? So it's like I avoid, if someone can come over here, I'm like not doing it. Like any private settings with like just Matt and Chris or like my closest friends, like, my friend Nate, when I'm home, he has a pool. Madison, those are the only two pools I really encounter. But the beach, I'll avoid. Like, being, oh, I just don't like swimming in the ocean. You know, that's the easiest excuse. It's the ocean, right? A pool's harder because people usually gather together to swim. Truth. But, yeah. I have a dumb question. Don't you and your brothers have the same build, though, like the same body? Not at all. Really? No, I'd, I'd say <laughs> my entire life, my entire life, I think I've been a solid 30 pounds heavier than Matt and Chris my whole life. And it's like, look at the luck of those straws, right? We're pulling straws and I get the 30 pound heavier your whole life straw. How fun is this, right? Matt is tiny. Chris, like, he, he fluctuates in weight more than me or Matt. Like, Chris can look like Matt one day. And then fucking rifle through a case of Pepsis and then go back. But it's weird. His metabolism, like, works weirdly. Like, he's super skinny, super not, super skinny, super not. But Matt, I'd say, is, like, Matt is way tinier than I am. So are you going to wear a shirt for everything? Because I was doing that, too. Like, I was hooking up with people and, like, I, I would never take a shirt off. No, that's unbelievable. <laughs> that's unbelievable. That's why I'm just, like, I'm avoiding these scenarios. You know what I mean? That's unbelievable. But I can't even think of that. Yeah, but maybe you, you know can find I mean? someone else who doesn't like to take their shirt off. Well, it's like for me is like I'm also just uncomfortable unshirted, if that makes sense. Like if I don't have a shirt on, I'm just uncomfortable where it's like um, like I can't even like lay down in my own bed shirtless alone because it's just like I don't like sleeping shirtless. I like having a shirt on. So for me, it's not really like I think of scenarios like like we're like, oh, I need to like take my shirt off for this scenario. It's like I'd rather not. <laughs> ever ever like I'm comfortable with a shirt on Dude, right there's been many moments where like somebody would come over and they like take their shirt off and I'd be there in like four hoodies and like six yeah. pairs of sweatpants I'd be like, like okay, okay what's good and like I'd say Matt Chris and Nathan are like it's like my th my two brothers and my straight friend and they're like all just running around shirtless and I'm like okay guys like do your thing like it's like every single time I think Nathan can take his shirt off he will he's a very like free like loves being shirtless like any scenario he can be shirtless I'm not gonna he, lie. I fucking hate those people he, he capitalizes on that like he he loves yeah he he loves the shirtless experience if he can he just out of but it's the same way I feel comfortable in a shirt like he's not mm, like a not he's know. not like a flaunty person I promise you he's not mm, Nathan's I'll, very different I want to like, meet him yeah he's amazing but he he's also just like he's living his his life in Boston so it's like he has his job and stuff but when he gets out here, you should meet him. He's really, really nice. He's amazing. Yeah, you know, I, I, people who like being shirtless confuse me. It's just yeah. You and him will have to have a conversation. Yeah, I want to talk. Yeah, I've gotten really. I'm not kidding. Like, I am your future. Mm. I feel bad for you. Um, yeah, but <laughs> Thank he, you. <laughs> I do. But mm. it will get better because I think eventually you'll find somebody who you're comfortable being shirtless around. Because here's what I'll tell you: you cannot last your whole life it, it never can, taking like your quick, shirt off. Though. Like I'll like. I'll enter scenarios where, like, like even Matt and Chris and Madison. Like, Madison I haven't been friends with that long, and I feel very comfortable shirtless around her. So I think it's just about, like, it's it's the person. It's, just, it's the person, very quickly. And that's, that's what I'll always figure out. I feel like Madison taught you guys something else. That's that you're going to be dating whoever you're seen with if they're famous. 
it, like that's just a mind blowing. Yeah, that's that's all mind blowing stuff to me. Is like that's the thing. Is like I would just clarify who or who I am not dating once and never speak about it again because the internet just blows things out of proportion so consistently. And that's, like, what always blows my mind of, like, people, like, anytime a boy or a girl, that's why I'm always, like, blessed, like, this is the best case scenario to be a gay person ever <laughs> is on the internet because it's, like, I'm surrounded by girls or, like, guys, like, the only person I've ever been, like, shipped with on the internet is Larry and it's because we filmed YouTube videos together and he's another gay guy. And it's, like, guys, you're grasping at straws. This is the first time I've been seen with a gay person, so you're, like, <laughs> taking this one fucking thing that you can, you know what I mean? And that's why I feel for, like, People like Madison and Matt and Chris, is like they're all just in like the public space. And it's like anytime boys and girls are near each other, it's just like, ooh, who's dating who? Who's dating who? It's like we're friends. And please, like, just like people on the internet need to understand that boys and girls can be friends. I don't know why it's 2023 and this is something that has to be consistently clarified or 2024. Like, boys and girls can be friends. And that's, and that, me being gay growing up. I always was friends with girls more than guys. And Matt and Chris felt I was kind of like our like lead person for making friends. And like I was the most social for sure out of the three of us. So it's like in school environments and sport environments, like I would always make our friends. So Matt and Chris have always gravitated toward being friends with girls because I've made our first friends and all our first friends were girls. So it's it's like that's the thing that why I feel extra bad for Matt and Chris constantly getting shipped with people is because like all of our friends so far in life, other than Nathan, have been girls. And it's always you. Mostly, yeah. <laughs> Literally. Like, and that's the thing, is like Matt's Matt always jokes and he's like, I need to make a friend this year that like you didn't make for me. And like Chris will say, Chris is like, he's really out there making like like I feel like moving to LA set us all up for that independence level of like making new friends. But like Chris has more guy friends now. But growing up and more consistently, our closest relationships have always been with girls. How'd you know you were gay? Oh my God, I didn't. And I was like, it was like, it took me forever. And I think the realize, the realization was, um, the realization was I thought I liked this girl, but I liked her boyfriend. And that is when it set in for me. It was in like <laughs> freshman year. But also it's like. We'd explain that. Especially like, well, it, I don't know how my brain like tricked myself into thinking it was her. But I think being a triplet is like. You people are constantly saying you guys are the exact same person. You're so similar. You guys look like this, this, and that. So it's like when I was the only one, I feel like with gay intrusive thoughts, it was like super out of left field. And it's like no one steered me away from being authentically myself. I just thought that I had to replicate what Matt and Chris were doing. So like realizing I was gay, it took me so long to actually have those pieces of my brain like click together because Matt and Chris, it was like the first time they weren't also going through that. So I think like that's crazy. This is yeah. the first experience that was solely yours. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'd say like figuring out I was gay. I was like, oh my god, that is like like me and Chris are not fully aligned mentally. Yeah, you share everything else for the most part. Like literally, I remember growing up and like it was I was so blindsided about like like especially just with like um like just lifestyles like I wasn't surrounded by like a gay person ever or, like influenced by a gay person to think about like that as a possible scenario totally. for me so I remember like going to school and like people would be like oh that's gay or this is gay or that's gay those are things that I said in like third and fourth grade not realizing I was a gay person and that's what I always don't understand is like when people call things gay negatively which they shouldn't do anymore because the year is 2024. I mean, dude, Hillary Duff was yelling at people about that like, shit like 20 years ago. Yeah. And like <laughs> right? people yeah. ahead of her time. And that's the thing. Is like, people I feel like don't do that nearly as much anymore. <laughs> but it's so weird to me of like, I was so confused because I remember a, like a really like defining moment in me figuring out a lot about myself was me, Matt, and Chris were together and like we were in, um, Maine on like this family vacation that we would like annually go on. And I think we were like nine or like eight and they were pissing me off and I was like you guys are being fucking annoying like that's gay or I said something about gay people negatively and one of the moms that was like on the trip heard me because there was like windows open like upstairs and my mom didn't know that I was like saying stuff like that either like to Matt and Chris negatively because she would have stopped me then and there but the other mom heard me and she has like gay kids of her own that are way older that are like 
probably in this scenario, they were like, I don't know, like 18 or something. And she told my mom and she's like, me and you should talk to your boys about like why that's wrong. So my mom's friend, I always praise her for like, really, I don't even think she really knows <laughs> that deal. she doesn't know the impact that it had in like my thought process and stuff is like her and my mom got together and told me Matt and Chris like why we can't negatively be saying stuff like that even though I was the only one that was doing it and that's like the most ironic thing about it is like I had straight brothers and straight friends and I'm calling these people gay negatively as we a literal project, gay kid like I'm like you're literally actually a gay little boy <laughs> and you're calling people gay negatively consistently like I would consistently be that it was like deflecting in my own brain. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, you're projecting. You're deflecting. You're doing yeah. the whole fucking thing. But it did, it, I did. I didn't. I don't think I could fully confidently even say in my own head like I'm gay as a thought until like freshman year of high school. And it was seeing. So you thought you had a crush on a girl, but yeah. when do you realize that? You also, don't... my friend Taylor by the pool. <laughs> the girl Taylor I was by the pool when I was like in the pool swimming when our house caught on fire. It was that girl Taylor. So you had a crush on her, but when do you realize it's actually the boyfriend? I knew subconsciously in the back of my head forever. So you just wanted to be around her because it meant you'd be around her boyfriend? Well, the weird thing is it wasn't really like a it wasn't really like a situational thing of like being around her will get me near her boyfriend because me and her were amazing friends. Like and we we she was my closest friend I'd say for like 2 years. And it was never about being close to her because of her boyfriend. I just think it was like I just also think it was like a um like a distance thing. Like our our foundation of our um my friendship with her was based off of like kind of me thinking I like her and then telling her and then realizing I was gay and then me and her had this joke of like oh I thought I liked you she was like one of the she was like one of the she was the second person that ever knew that I was gay and then me and her built our relationship off of like me and her both knowing that I was gay and like I thought that I liked her boyfriend and then for for like three years me and her were really really best friends because she had thought that I like it was a very short it was a very short aspect of that friendship I had with her was her actual boyfriend, and I never wanted to be friends with her to get closer to him. I think my brain just genuinely thought that I liked her, and then I told her, and then we were both like, no, I don't like you. <laughs> like, I told her, and she's like, you don't like me. And I was like, you're right. You're right. Like, we kind of realized at the same time when I told her, like, yeah, you're wrong. So that was, like, hilarious, honestly. Do you date now? Are you open to dating now? I am like I just think of um, me, Matt, and Chris working together, and like us consistently working together is like relationships are super time consuming, and I just think of like it has to be a perfect scenario to get into a relationship in mine, Matt, and Chris's position because we have such a busy schedule with each other, and we're such a prominent part of each other's lives now that like I know some people that will like get into relationships at like a young age, and then they're like fully with this person forever, every single day, day in and day out. And that's a situation we cannot have. So I think we're all really like, it's not like we're shunning it away or opening it. It's just like, it's more of like, this is what I'm hyper focused on. And we'll see what comes in the direction of the Sterniolo triplets. And also the right people will come in and not yeah. affect how you guys operate. Yeah. Cause I think of like, like everybody meets people for a specific reason and like especially like on a like time reason like time frame like you meet people in certain parts of your life to teach you all like these lessons and that's like super important to me is like me and Chris I feel like not really as much Matt but me and Chris were both in like situations before being content creators that were like super time consuming like situation ship type of situations that both kind of like like we all kind of like realize like driving through content and like making sure content is our priority is what we all want after realizing that it's like we don't want to be this young and putting all of our energy into a relationship that like may not last forever but I know that like whatever what I am doing now the videos I'm making will always be on the internet you know what I mean like this is something that's more certain than a relationship 100% yeah and by the way like relationships come in time you know, like you, Absolutely. everything comes at the right time. Yeah. And it's like, I remember being in high school and middle school and like really wanting to be in a relationship. Like that's all I wanted. But it's like realizing, like taking the time to realize that it will happen naturally when it should is the best thing you can do for yourself. Like, especially as like a teenager, like teenagers, I feel like put, and it's like, I was once in the, their shoes. So I fully understand, but teenagers put a lot of emphasis in like who's dating who, and I want to start dating someone or like seeing their friends dating. And like, I think there's a period of time that all like sophomores, juniors and seniors in high school go through where they're all like, I need to like be dating because everybody else is dating. And there's like that spur of like 
everybody you know is in a relationship oh, yeah. and then they all dwindle away. And I feel like that was like a time frame that is like everybody needs to realize there's not no, there shouldn't be pressure in those situations in high school. By the way, Especially I wish in high school. I wish I knew that in high school. Yeah, I mean, me I just existed with this pressure o o over me, and mm -hmm. like I turned into a thirty-year-old virgin. So, but it also doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Truth. Like it, it really genuinely does not matter because that's like personal experiences that you are having. You know what I mean? Like, like these things about ourselves, like don't affect other people at all. That's what I always just constantly think of. Is like anybody who's weighing an opinion. And that's why I always laugh on like the digital side when people are like, I ship this person and this person or these people should date. It's like you're leaving this comment from a life you're living of your own. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like no one's going to read this comment. Like I'm never going to read a comment of someone being like, oh, Nick, you should date this gay person and be like, oh, my God, you're totally right. <laughs> like I'm going to go act on this. It's like I'm never going to be influenced in a relationship uh, like to a relationship in my life based off of a ship or a comment. Like that's never going to work. It has to like authentically happen. Totally. Yeah. Your tattoos are really cool. Thank you. They're really I've, beautiful. I've had every single one done by the same exact person. Whoa. Except one. They look cohesive. Yeah, she's amazing. Her name's Mez. She's one of the most talented people actually ever. So how do you know when it's time for another tattoo? It's time right now. How do you know? Um, It's just been a while. And it's like, also, our tattoo artist is one of, like, she's super, super, super nice and amazing that it's like, genuinely, I will get tattooed to be with her. <laughs> That's, like, kind of what it is. Like, oh, I haven't seen Mez in, like, a month or two months. I'm like, okay, I need to get a tattoo because I want to, like, hang out. And she's amazing. But honestly, I I knew I got my first tattoo. Um, I'm trying to think. I have no idea. I have a list on my phone. And it's, like, bullet point, period, parenthesis. And it, those stand for, like, different tattoo sessions. And oh. then I have a list of what tattoos I've gotten at each point. So I can tell you exactly, like, which ones I got when and, like, at what time. But... The first ones on my arm I got, like, in odd places. Like, I got this bat and moon and then this Power Ranger first and, like, this <laughs> clock first. And I set myself up. I was like, oh, I'm going to be doing patchwork, which is cool. I was okay with that. And then once I had, like, those three, it was just consistently, like, filling that skeleton of space. See, that's where I'm afraid. Like, I do that with my house, right? I walk mm. around my house and I go, oh, shit, there's, like, this wall that's free. There's this space that needs a plant. Yeah. Fuck, man. I don't want a big house because you want to know something? I'm going to have tchotchkes on my ass. Yeah. Because I'm going to be filling space. Yeah. That's going to happen with me with the tattoo. Yeah. I'm going to get one on my arm and realize that there's a bunch of blank space around it and feel compelled to fill it. That's what I did, but I knew that I wanted to do that. So that's where it was like, it was okay with me. Like oh. I got those three knowing that like, oh, I'm going to have empty space, but that's fine because my goal is to complete my arm. So then I completed my arm and the only spot I don't have a tattoo on my arm is this elbow. Why not? But that's also like an elbow. Like, I don't even know if that's like a normal, like, like, sh like what? I don't know. It's not a gap that I worry about because that's a joint. Yeah, totally. Like, yeah, I'm like, I don't know. Like, it looks really good. good. Thank you. I love, I really do love them all. People be like, you'll regret your tattoos. I'll be like, by the time I can regret it, I'm dying in 20 years. <laughs> I don't so, care. So you know? when did you, when gonna die. Did, when did you start getting them? Um, I got my first tattoo. I wanted, I, w I remember wanting my first tattoo at like 13. Like I've always been like a tattoo person. I wanted them so badly. I think I got my first one like 18 and a half and then I think from 18 and a half to like 19 and a half I got every single one. So did living this in that period of time your life changing so rapidly does that make you want more tattoos? Um see I just make sure that my tattoos are something that I love. My whole life I've loved Power Rangers, my whole life I've loved Scarecrows. So it's like every single thing I have is just like, I, I can ensure you I love what I have tattooed. I mean, I won't tattoo something on me if I don't love it. So it's like, I'm not really getting like mementos of my life. Like in this moment, a lot of the tattoos ideas, like I have a lot, a decent amount of tattoos that the idea for the tattoo spurred when I was like 12 and I've like had like on my iPod or like in my head knowing like, oh, I want that tattoo and I'm old enough to get them. Like my Scooby-Doo I've wanted since I was like, I think like nine. Amazing. Yeah, so it's like I'm just I just knew like I know what I like well enough in that scenario. There's no tattoos that I have that have been like I've debated between. But I have invited Mez to like come tattoo me while she's on the way planning out what I'm gonna get. So like she, she wouldn't know, or you wouldn't know. Neither of us would know. And then be like, oh, I've also done a couple blindfolded. What? Like Matt and Chris have picked them out for me, and then I got I like took the blindfold off, and I was like, oh my god, these are cool. And Is that a video? 
Yeah. Oh, that's good. Which which ones are those? Chris picked out. I have a disco ball like way back here. I don't know if it's visible. Like right on the back. Oh so yeah, the yeah, disco ball there. And then Matt picked out the trident that's on the back of my leg. Right so there. are you gonna fill your whole sick. body or? Um, right now I have just my right arm and like I'd say a third of my left leg. I'd like to do my whole body as well. Yeah. My dad, I told my dad when I was 19, I was like, I'm going to get hand tattoos. And he's like, no, don't. And I was like, okay, I'll wait till I'm 20. And I was like three months for my birthday and now I'm 20. But I don't know. Like there's like hands are aggressive. I do want everything, I think, but I don't know. So that's why I haven't done it yet. Wow. Yeah, well, you also have it, a but. lot of life to live. So that's slow honestly down. the only thing that wants me to slow down is be like, come on, like what if you have like a kid and like you want to like, get their name tattooed or something and you're out of room? <laughs> I honestly the only thing that slows me down from getting tattoos is the possibility of running out of room. The only oh, thing that's that scary slows to me down. think about. Yeah. Does not like being shirtless plan you want to cover your body with tattoos? Possibly. Thanks. So. That'd be a good analysis, maybe. I think I like, don't know though. I hate to be that guy, but tattoos ain't gonna like yeah, no, it's not going to do anything. You got what you got. Yeah, and that's why I'm thinking like, I don't have any tattoo. I don't have any tattoos that are not in a visible location. If I'm wearing shorts and a tank top, you know what I mean. So all my tattoos are visible. So it's like if I was shirtless, nothing would change in the experience of like what you can or can't see with tattoos. I feel like it could play into it if like, like I've debated being like, oh, do I want my stomach or my chest tattooed? But I can't, I don't want to be shirtless in front of anybody. So then nobody's going to ever see it. Or the tattoo or artist. Or the tattoo artist. I'm like, I, especially like when we get tattoos, like me, Matt, and Chris will like, like we get tattoos like in, sometimes in intimate setting, but sometimes we'll have like friends like where we're getting tattooed and there'll be like five people. And it's like, I don't want to be getting tattooed and then have someone like show up and then I'm like shirtless laying on this bed. Like I'm like stuck to this bed, like gross. Like I don't need someone coming in like looking I mean, getting tattooed like that. My tattoo artist, I trust a lot. Like, I'd honestly, I'd be totally, I'd get a tattoo on, like, my stomach or my chest if me and her were alone. But if Matt or Chris or like, people showed up, I'd be like, no, I don't want to do this in front of everybody. I'm really excited for the moment that you look at yourself in the mirror shirtless and you're happy with yourself. Yeah, we're all waiting on it. I'm super excited. I, I'm not there. <laughs> all, I'm, me and all the people in my head are <laughs> super excited. I'm personally not really there, but... Mm. It, it, I'll get there. It'll be super exciting for us both. It's gonna be huge. We should take like a banger mirror selfie shirtless together and like post it on the internet when what? we're like super comfortable. Oh my god! That'd be like, sick. Guys, come on! Hey, what's up? The thought of doing that? Yeah, I, I'm sweating. No, like, I'm that, terrified. That's that's crazy. Crazy. I hate that as well. I don't know why I said it. That's like a terrible idea. I, I don't even have a photo of myself without a shirt on. No, yeah, I don't have. I have like obviously like a couple, but I, I don't I'm have a like one. Yeah, none of mine have been posted to the internet. But that's another thing is like I feel like. Any piece of me that feels like, oh, I feel comfortable possibly doing that, I think of, like, the amount of times I'd see this photo to my, like, unwillingness as well. Like, I don't want to see it, but it may pop up on my phone. Eh. Like, I don't want to open my TikTok like a fan of, like, reposted it and be like, like, I want to see this in the limitation of myself. You know what I mean? I don't <laughs> want it to, like, be in my tagged photos or, like, on TikTok if I open TikTok or Instagram. Like, But the flip side is if you loved life. what you saw, you'd want it everywhere. True. So that's why I'm like, I'm not posting this. Yeah. If you want to get a trainer together and go have Z's. <laughs> I also like, just can't. Like, I don't, I'm not doing that. I'm not I don't moving either. around. I don't feel the need <laughs> to do this. Like, I'm very dormant in my state of like, yeah, I'm unhappy now. I'm not, am I going to do something about it? Absolutely not. I've been happy for a while. I can continue to deal with this. <laughs> okay. You know? You've only been around for 20 years. Yeah. I'm like, I can continue. I could do another 10. <laughs> right? Okay. See, I'm at 30 now. I'll see you there. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. I just like, I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going to work out. Not happening to, for me. Got it. Mm. Would you... I don't want to work out either, but I would, like, I'd die it. I just don't want to go to, like, a public gym either. Because that's no, another that, thing. No, like, no, I'm no. not getting, like, videos of me posting right. to the you internet. You really think I was suggesting that we split a trainer no, at a no. fucking Equinox? No, no, Are you no. high? I'm just, I'm not, I'm not doing, like... No, I'm going to a gym with nobody. Or yeah. it's going to be at my house where there's also nobody. Yeah. And the only times I've gone to the gym... Like, like I'll go to like a like one of those I don't know where they like train like Marvel superheroes or yeah. something. Like I'll attempt to do it for like two weeks, and I go at the ass crack of dawn when there's mm -hmm. nobody there, and I ask them to stay in a room where there's nobody. Yeah, I can't. But I think that like that. part of me being like insecure about stuff like that is like I just like and that's why some of my favorite types of people are people that are just like super overtly confident, and like that's why like some of my favorite thing like I'm very interested in like the world of like drag artists and like mm. RuPaul's Drag Race is my favorite show of all time because it's just like 
I love watching that show because it's like all these people are so confidently themselves. It's like unbelievable to watch. That's part of why I love like watching that. It's just because like one of it is like super creative and then and it helps me like think of like my creative ideas. And it's just these people are just like 100% living authentically to them. Like you don't see like moments where like in order to dress up in drag and like be a drag queen, you have to be brave. That That is un believable like to be able to even just do that so it's like then on top of that the confidence of like then performing or doing what they do is like a level up i think this is a video we should put you in drag probably not gonna happen either i <laughs> see it's like i'm i'm an observer you know i like love <laughs> seeing things happen and being like oh my god that'd be so cool i'm never doing that that's like a consistent <laughs> thought in my head that's so cool i'm never doing that ever in my life <laughs> what else is on that list um don't know got it I have, like, like, I, I don't know. I'll see things happen and just be, like, like, even, like, singing is, like, I can't sing as well. But, like, how fun is it to be able to sing? Go perform. Go have fun. You know what I mean? Like, I always say, I, I wish me, Matt, or Chris had, like, in, like, a performable, a confidence in a performable talent. Because that would make our <laughs> tour life so much easier. You know what I mean? Yeah, you all sit like, there while one of you sing. Yeah, we're to- yeah, exactly. It's like if one of you one of you fuckers write a song and sing on stage, it'll make my life so much easier. You know what I mean? Because it's just that like, easy. I like being on stage for tour, but it's also like I like it, but it's like, what am I doing? Like it's like this isn't like a definable talent. Like he's gonna go out and be funny on the stage. Like I don't know what's gonna happen when I get out there. I really don't. Like our shows are so like not rehearsed that I don't know what I'm gonna do when I go on the stage. Yeah, but you're just being you, and that's why people show up. Me and Chris went to VidCon like the past year, and I hate to like name drop the actual thing of VidCon like then and then proceed to talk shit. <laughs> but we went to VidCon and they had us doing like a panel, and they were like, "Oh, it's like a Q and A," and that's like what we did on tour. So we we're like, "Oh, amazing! Like we'll definitely be able to do that." Um, and they put us out there. They're like, "Just answer the questions as they pop up on the slide that's gonna pop up behind you." cool we can do it so it was like influencer trivia something that they had come up with and i was like all right guys and we had just met four other people that were getting on the stage with us and we're like all right guys we're gonna like we just met them we're about to do like competitive q a to answer these questions they're gonna put the first question up right now and we turn doesn't change and then i was like they're gonna put the first question up right now (laughs) and it didn't change again and then like a minute had passed and then i had to fully the guys that were on the stage and Matt and Chris, like when we got off, like praising, they were like, thank you so much. I like carried out a full like, because they, they had told me, I went over to the side and I told the person at VidCon, I'm like, the, the slideshow's not working. And they were like, oh, like we're working on it, but like just get off the stage. And I was like, people bought tickets because they knew that me, Matt and Chris were going to be on the yeah. stage doing a and ai am not getting off the stage. Like we're doing some level of an experience here and now I don't care if I'm doing fucking jumping jacks on the stage for 20 minutes like something's gonna happen so I googled trivia questions and I hosted trivia like on the spot made up a complete thing and it went pretty well Bravo. But that was like the tour experience helped me so much because I was like this is kind of what we were doing for tours answering trivia questions I'm gonna find some and host this myself but they were trying to get a, tell us to get off I'm like also how do you set people up to need to answer questions on a Q and A, and then not put the even no one even said into a mic. Oh, here's the first question. All the questions were like visual things. Like if it was like, which like host is this, and it was like one of your eyes or something, and you're supposed to be like, oh, like take a guess at like who it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was like we couldn't see anything, we couldn't hear anything. There was nothing. Not gonna lie, all these things seem janky to me. The VidCons, the the I the, liked like like that's the, all janky. Yeah, I probably won't ever go to VidCon again. You probably don't need to. Really don't want to ever again. And I went because I was like, we did tour. Like, it could be a fun experience for, like, more fan interactions because we already did something similar. But it, it is a part of, like, what it means to be the biggest of the big in this space, right? Like, it's it's like a rite of passage. Like, everybody mm-hmm. shows up to VidCon at least once. But And that's why I like our tour as well. It's like, that's our version of VidCon, but way better in how we, as a team, and me and Matt and Chris want it to go. You know what I mean? Like, it's a show that we can perfect from beginning to end i'm very confident what our stage performance is now and i won't tour again unless i feel confident to what our stage performance is going to be then are you, you know? going to do another for this year um i have no idea it's not like we don't have a plan um we move pretty quickly so like usually people would be able to tell you like yes or no because they'd have it like scheduled out but like we could schedule that out and go pretty quickly if we needed to so you don't have any set in stone plans and also like Matt is working on a, um, a personal project, and like when we left for our, our second tour, super soon after our first, we all were like, 
kind of overwhelmed a little bit at the beginning of it. And everybody who went on tour was kind of like, here's my list of three things I want to get done before we go on tour again. And it could be like any goal you had. Like one of mine was to launch my brand. Right? What else I was, was on like, your list? So I can't remember now, but I know that one of them was wanting to definitely launch my brand. And that was kind of like my staple. Be like, have it be off the ground, do like two or three drops. And then Matt's working on a project, but... Um, he, it's not going to be for like a bit, like a couple months, right? So it's like after, I know that that's something he wanted to like at least hammer more into before leaving. And then um, that's like kind of what it is. Like everybody kind of just has goals before we go again. But there's definitely a possibility. I just also won't go if I don't feel 100% confident in what it's going to be. Totally. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. What were Chris's goals? Um, I think that his was also about his brand as well. He's like planning on elevating a lot of stuff soon. He has super cool plans. And that's the thing is he has his brand that he's working to elevate a lot right now. I'm just getting started on mine. And then Matt, I'm not going to say what his is at all. And it's not even really like what people think it is. Like I've seen a lot of, he's had people guessing on the internet and nobody's been like a hundred percent right, which makes me laugh. Cause they're all like, he's going to do clothes again. And he's going to do this. He's going to do that. Um, but then that's another thing that's kind of holding me back from wanting to tour again is like if we have a little bit of time, we can each perfect what our personal ideas and things are. And then our tour could somewhat revolve around like pop ups really? and like bringing stuff there. So who knows what it would be. But, Building it into something bigger. Yeah. But also something that's even more deeply connected to everything else that you guys have going on. Yeah. Why do you want to come on our show now? Um, I honestly have never, ever done something like this. And Chris wanted Chris went and he did his and I was like he said it went well, obviously. And I had seen your guys. Like, I've seen clips. I've seen your interviews for years past. I remember in COVID when you interviewed people on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And yeah. I was like, I remember seeing some of those when I was in COVID. And I just remember, like, this being like a like, – it's an environment I also never saw myself being a part of, but knowing that, like, environments like this had existed. So it's just, like, for me it was kind of crazy of, like, that's an option you have. Why would you not do that? And then especially now that my – I wanted to wait till my brand was off the ground so we could talk about it. But – once I was off the ground and then realizing it's like you're living once and you should go do more with the access you have to the world you live in. So I feel more prepared to do things just out and about because I'd be, it'd be stupid for me to not, you totally. know? It's it's preparation and also embracing who you are and what yeah. you add to culture and society. Yeah. And then feeling comfortable and confident enough to talk about all of it. Yeah. And it's terrifying. Like, it's like, I don't know. Like, that's the thing too, that people think like influencery people or celebrities are like fearless, right? So they'll be like, go to this podcast, go collab with this person, go collab with that person. It's like, you don't know these people until you're going and filming with them. Like, I've met you guys very few times, if talked to you at all. I've never talked to today. you. today, yeah. So it's like people like expect influencers to be very fearless. We're like, go do that. Or like celebrity people, go do that. Go do that podcast. It's like, I could be terrified of going to like talk to someone I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. This could have went terribly. It didn't. No, it it's going pretty good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it could have went awful. How'd you know this shit was ready to be out for the people and for public consumption? Because I love the product. Because since I'm like an avid lip balm user, I was like, once I love the product, I'll feel confident to give it to someone else. And also another fun fact is it's all recyclable. So you can recycle the plastic, the nice. um, thing that it comes in. You can recycle the tube when you're done. And that's sustainability. Yeah. And it's all organic as well. Were these the only three flavors you were, uh, flavors, 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 yeah. Flavor. yeah, you taste them. Only three yeah. flavors you were working on. Uh, no, there's definitely going to be more for sure. We are like right now currently perfecting like a lot about it. We're, um, the, big thing that you guys got it in like the packaging is a lot of cardboard yes it's all recyclable but our current process right now of like limiting the amount of cardboard mm -hmm. so that it can then be cheaper because those are also like the the cost of that cardboard is a little high so it's like we're looking at like a price drop and like a package slimming so it'll be still be, still be the same product and the same size but working toward like a smaller compact um packaging and Will stuff you, oh so you're only always going to sell it in sets of threes no, that's another thing I also forgot to mention is um, making it more accessible to buy, like, one. Because there's yeah. a lot of people who want one or, like— Buy the same one over yeah, and over. Yeah, or a lot of people just also know that they're not going to like one. Like, there's a lot of people who are, like, avid watermelon haters or avid <laughs> cherry haters or something. You know what I mean? Where they're like, I know that I won't use this and I want them. So um, next steps will be probably um, more cost-effective and packaging because the packaging is costful and huge. And then also— um, 
new flavors and individually being able to buy them each. My goal is obviously retail so that it's super accessible to totally. everybody. They can walk into a store and buy it, but currently it's online. And then I think You'll somewhere in soon next steps will be individually being able to buy them. By the way, I got to say, your name is nowhere on this, which is awesome because you're building yeah. something bigger than you, right? Yeah. And that's the thing is like, I'd rather be the face of it than have it be super branded. Super branded is like, it becomes super like merchandise where like, this mm -hmm. is for everybody. Like I want someone who, who just wants, wants like a good organic lip balm that feels great and tastes great that doesn't know who I am, especially once these are in retail. It's like, I want like fucking so-and-so's mother to go to the grocery store mm -hmm. and just be like, this is what I want to get. I was going to ask, would you do like a Chris flavor or a Matt flavor? But then I guess that kind of goes against what you're trying to build. I think that um, what, it all comes down to like individual branding in the sense of like I would be down to do like a collaboration with Chris, especially with his brand, but like way in the future. Like I want to give him t time to establish. I want time to establish myself. But it's like once again is like we're blessed in the position we're in that it's like why not do a collab with each other we're brothers we're best friends we both have something super cool going for us so it's like i know that me and chris have talked about it because his brand is off the ground but it's like we probably would we probably both kind of want like a a collab that's not each other under our belt before collaborating with each other because it's like um me and chris collabing would be the easy route to mm -hmm. go you know what i mean because we have direct access to each other it's like we both see more for each other we're like i know he can go do something with a different brand and collaborate and i can do something with a different brand and collaborate and me and him can talk even if it's in eight months a year two years but yeah do you ever imagine a, a life or a reality where you don't live with them your brothers i try to avoid this thought process <laughs> and this thinking process just because it's like especially with um my mom and her family are super close knit and like my mom we live in like um or we lived in a house we lived in boston that my grandpa moved here and got for my parents you know wow. what i mean it's like my whole our whole life would not be possible if like our grandfather didn't come here from portugal and immediately like work super hard so that my family could be where they're at so it's like my mom has a decently close relationship she's not like a twin or a triplet or anything but she has close relationships with her siblings and because of my grandpa moved here and kind of like capitalized on property and stuff he was able to make it so that my mom can go and easily visit my grandma or easily go and visit her brothers so seeing my mom's super close relationship with her like family or not even close relationship but quick access if my grandma needs anything my mom can be there quickly so it's like I don't want to, I'm not saying me and Matt and Chris need to live in the same house forever, but, like, that access of, like, neighbors would be amazing. I don't want to, like, ever be, like, an hour away from Matt or Chris or, like, a flight away from Matt and Chris. But Same block. Yeah, same block. Do you ever see a day where where they edit one of the videos so you don't, you don't have to do it all? So they do the 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026 recap videos because I refuse to go back and do it. That's the only thing they've ever, like, edited is, like, mm -hmm. they'll go and, like, mm -hmm. Um, I remember Chris was like super happy about it because him and Matt had edited it together and a fan posted or like the Sterniolo team account, which is one of our like update accounts posted about like the new video and Chris commented, I edited this and all the comments were like, yeah, we know because it's like not as good as the other ones because it was like he had it cropped weird and stuff and that was so funny. But Matt is way better at video editing than Chris, but I think that it's kind of just like my job and everybody knows it's kind of like my job, like Matt is more of, like, our real-life problem solver of, like, he drives us around. Me and Chris can't drive. He'll do our laundry. He, I'm, like, definitely a messier. <laughs> I'm a messier person, so Matt will do that. That's, like, his tasks, right? Chris is super creative. Chris helps come up with most of our video ideas and, like, orchestrate what our videos are going to be. And then I'll put them together. So it's, like, we all play our roles to, like, help lead a super progressive life. Well, but Matt really is just, I mean— He's amazing, Matt. He's a cleaner. He's amazing. He drives us around. He's like, he's like just hilarious to me. Matt makes me laugh. But that's the thing is like me, Matt and Chris, I'm okay with editing the videos because I'm aware that like, even though I'm doing more than them on the front of like putting this content out, this content wouldn't exist if I wasn't filming with Matt and Chris. Totally. Like I'm editing my mm -hmm. own videos. I'm just filming with people that I know and care about, you know, because that was the thing is like I had always been video editing at school videos of myself. I was in graphic design in high school for like four years. So it's like editing has always been a process of what I'm doing. So that's why I'm super OK with continuing to do it, because it's like it's something I know well as well. I don't feel confident enough picking up an editor because they're not going to do what I want them to do. 
And it's also like, it started with you, right? Like yeah. when Chris is here, he said like, none of this fame or success would have come without you filming and editing these videos yeah. early on. These recap I've, videos for I've your friends. I always loved making content. Like just, just putting stuff to, cause that was the thing that I started with photography. And then I was like, I want to be able to like, photography is dated in the sense of like, like I like, I see photos of my mom when she was younger and those are some of my favorite things to see. But my mom and dad were not super tech savvy. So like, we don't really have photos like vi we have photos, but we don't have like videos of yeah. me, Matt and Chris until like my older brother, Justin was born. So then that's when I'm like, it's crazy that there's not really b videos of me at like one or two or three. And so I just think of like for the future of like our families, like when Matt and Chris have kids and I'm like 60, like if I want to go look back at memories, I always was just recording. Cause I even like videos of me that are on the internet with people that like I went to school with. And that was like, it for my relationship or like I met on vacation and that was it for our relationship or friendships that are over I love videos like that on the internet because I can like like I can go back to videos of me like on my Instagram or something with someone I like don't talk to as much anymore but that was a moment in my life and that's usually my philosophy for if there's like bad videos or ugly photos of me is like it's super unfortunate but it exists yeah, it's a moment it's an undeniable factor of like what is there so I would just make those videos of like this is what our life is like. And it just became, ended up like, I went from photography to ca capture memories to videos to capture memories. And then our job is now doing the same thing. Capturing memories. Yeah. It's really interesting. You guys are really special. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I really enjoy what we do and I have fun doing it with Matt and Chris. It's really great. You can tell. Yeah. Yeah. It, it reads and it, it, I don't know, it has real impact and it means a lot to a lot of people. Yeah. It shocks me every single time I think about it. Really. Like thinking of people going to watch our videos. I'm like, why are you doing this? I don't, I still, I never get it. And but, that's okay. Like you never yeah. need to get it. Yeah. Just I keep, guess so. Just keep doing it. Uh huh. Just keep being you. And I think there's like magic to not fully getting it. Mm hmm. Cause I think the second you feel like you've gotten it and understood why, then everything mm -hmm. goes to shit. Yeah. Because then all you want to do is fulfill the why. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Cause me and Chris also just like, we're super different. And that's I, what I also feel like is a staple in it is like, we're just completely polar opposite people. And it's like three people who are super different that look exactly the same <laughs> getting together to like joke around is what I always love most about our content. It's like me, Matt and Chris, I don't think would be people that would become friends if we weren't triplet siblings. You know what I mean? Like we, <laughs> that's like what it's it great. is. Like it's forced yeah. proximity. If like these guys are your friends, it's like now it's like, obviously the best friendship I have in the world, but it was because of forced proximity of being triplets. Have, have you thought of like bringing in like somebody to just shoot you guys all the time? Um, so we have like a, like we have, um, a filmer, so to speak, if we wanted to, like every single one of our tours has been like fully documented and fully filmed. But I just also like, we're, I don't know. It's like, it's kind of like, to me, I just think of like, this is our life all the time that like I'm okay with filming in the slim amount of moments that we do because it's just all of these moments will remind me of times in my life even if it's like 20 minutes of one week yeah. and not the whole time because it's like my life that week has been very similar to what it is and I can always recall back because it's like I know that I'm being 100% real in my videos so it's like there's a lot of times where I can go back and see a video or I'll watch a video trying to remember something that happened like in that time frame of my life but isn't in that totally. video but it will remind me of it so I'm, like, super okay with, like, the levels of which we film right now. Well, and there's also something to, like, living life, experiencing all this stuff, and then coming to your kitchen or your car with all of this mm -hmm. and just filming, right? Yeah. Like, it's different if everything's captured all the time. Yeah, and that was part of the quantity over quality, like, conversations is, like, especially once we started our podcast, we were, like, podcast, Wednesday video, Friday video, podcast, Wednesday video, Friday video, where it's, like, it got to a point where, like, a lot of our most viral moments, or our best moments in our car videos are, like, stories that I was able to share or Matt and Chris were able to share from our week of uh, being alive and That's doing it. what we do. So it's, like, when we – the quantity over quality conversation started because we were getting to a point where, like, we were filming back to back to back. And when we weren't filming, we were thinking of what we were going to film as opposed to, like, mm -hmm. living. So it was like our videos were like us having to come up with things to talk about that we didn't experience. And then it's like, I don't like videos like that. Like I'd rather post just on Fridays and have it be, I can have time to go curate a story that is super funny, authentic, and people will enjoy to watch. And then I will go and post that on Friday and be happier. And that will probably, honestly, I get more I, views. Yeah. Do like, I don't mm -hmm. fear a degress in like views and numbers and engagement because of lowering videos, because I know that 
it will let us, it will set us up for um, better quality content, even if it's less. And that's what matters. Yes. Check out Space Camp. It's yes. really good. Tastes really good. Feels really good. We're going to put a link in the description below. Also, you can uh, take a look at Nick's channel, all Thank the profiles, all that kind of stuff. We'll put it below. You good? Yeah. Were you? I mean, you have a huge loyal following, but were you expecting this to sell out so quickly? No. Because it sold out instantly. It shocks me how, it, it shocks me because everything that me, Matt, and Chris kind of drop sells out. Like, we'll do like this. And it's like, that's the thing is I've seen like so many five-star reviews of people who haven't used it. I'm like, guys, <laughs> I love you so much, but enjoy the product. I want you to really love what I'm selling you guys. So it just shocks me that we have like a consistent fan base of people who are willing to buy. And that's the thing is also, I think, I think we are doing a restock of this exact packaging and everything while we're like squaring everything away for the future. But I think these exact three packs in that exact packaging will be back in Valentine's Day as well. So it Perfect. did sell out fast, but it'll be back. Giddy up. Yep. Space Camp, sign on up. What does that even mean, the name? So I started our podcast saying good morning campers every single episode. And that was before I had the idea for my lip balm. But I had started brainstorming for like wanting to do a lip balm so long ago. And then when I started saying good morning campers at the beginning of every single podcast, it kind of stuck in our fan base of like... I, I felt like it created a community around our podcast. And I was like, I kind of want that same sense of community for my brand. Like everybody who's a part of it feels like very a part of it, you know? So, and then a lot of my inspirations are just drawn from like area 51, kind of like, like, you know, like those, like those movies, like don't worry, darling's a great example. Yeah. Edward Scissorhands is a great example where there's like super perfect living lives, but like with that eeriness of creepiness and like outer space and aliens and stuff. So a lot of the inspiration for like photo shoots and like creative development around my brand was outer space. And I put together a list of like 50 themed space words that I liked to like try and combine together with other aspects of my life. But I was like, why am I doing this? I can just use the word space. You know what I mean? Like I'm making words that are about this broad word, but it's like that works. And then campers, I was like sense of community, brand vision, and then it was put together well that's what it is attend space camp friend we're gonna put a link in the description yes. below grab it for valentine's day a have we covered everything yeah we covered a lot are we missing anything i don't think so i feel good i feel good about what we talked about i feel great too yeah i had so much fun guys thank you i really appreciate Thanks you for coming i'm gonna thank post you. a picture of this on our social media and people are gonna go crazy about what's happening oh yeah i'm gonna post chris posted when he came to um be with you guys the um the amazon music like snack thing in the green yeah. room yeah, yeah, yeah. so i'll post like the same like hello nicholas and people will know exactly where i am because they saw chris's so i really appreciate you thank you so much i, I appreciate uh, you too your honesty is really refreshing and i have a lot of respect for the three of you thank you so much it means a lot excited to really. watch you guys keep doing your thing thank you please come back i'll be back for sure and i know i know matt wants to come in and i know people are going to expect you guys to have matt mm -hmm. for a while but i just want to let all the viewers know that are expecting <laughs> matt it's going to be a minute. Like, he's working. He wants to, like, be able to come here. Especially Matt's more shy and reserved than me and Chris, so he wants to be able to come here and, like, really talk about what he's working on. So he doesn't want to come here preemptive to that existing because that's what he wants to talk about. Totally. So he's going to be some time, but everybody, all Stern Yellow Tripler fans and your viewership, are, we're gonna, they're going to all have to be patient. Matt told me to literally tell people, he's like, tell everyone to be patient when you go today because it's going to be a while. I'm like, I will tell them to be patient. I really like that we have had each one of you guys individually. And I of love that together. as well. Yeah, I he's, love that as well. You are very different from one so another. Unbelievably different. Like, if we did something together, I'd feel like I didn't say all I wanted to. You know what I mean? And I, that's all we want from our guests is to yeah. feel like they've said everything they needed to say. And I do. I appreciate Goal you. completed. Fuck yeah. Nick Sterniolo, everybody. Woo! Thank you, everyone. <laughs>